The important thing is to not have regrets. And to not have regrets, you pour everything into your dream, and then if your dream blows up, at least you say, well, it was a nightmare. Right? Yeah. That's the key, right? So if you want to do music, then do music, but do it 150%. Do it 150%. So I wanted to be a writer. So I took a very advanced uh, writing course and was paired with a well-known Canadian writer. And we worked away on, on my book, uh, The God of Atheists. And I wrote for four to five to six hours a day. Sometimes I'd write six to 8,000 words a day. I researched on the time that I wasn't writing. And I wrote the equivalent of four novels in 18 months, which is one novel that's like 370,000 wow. words, which is like a big trilogy. And then another novel, which was originally about 200,000 words, which I hacked down to about 120. And so for me, I was like, well, I want to be a writer. So I took this writing course, which gave me exposure to agents. And I researched and I wrote and I researched and I wrote and I researched and I wrote, and that's what I did. Now, I did not become a novel writer. I got amazing reviews. Like one guy who had a PhD in literature, English literature reviewed my book because my agent was like, you know, I'm trying to sell this book. I like the book. I think it's really good. And so she shopped it out to someone to get a review of the book. Uh, he was a professional reviewer. And he said of my novel, The God of Atheists, this is the great Canadian novel. I've never written it, I've read anything like this before. This is revolutionary. This is the most wonderful thing. It's an, like I, I read this like, dazzled and i like every time the phone rang for the next week i'm like well here it is you know it comes my career but uh of course for reasons that i understand now but didn't 20 years ago it didn't happen now i'm glad that it didn't happen because this is much more important for me to be doing and a much more um positive thing for the world as a whole for me to be doing but I was all in, you know, I, I quit my mm -hmm. entrepreneurial career and they offered me like 150 grand a year to go back for two to three days a week. I mean, <laughs> but I said, no, I said, listen, I'm doing this writing thing and tempt me with all the foul money that you want. Uh, I'm going to do this writing thing. And that's what I did. And I put heart and soul in it and I worked at it night and day, just like I did when I was in therapy. I did three hours a week and then wrote dreams down and did kept a journal. And like, I mean, I'm a big one for like, don't half-ass do things, right? So yeah. if you're going to go into music, then go into music, which means you wake up and you start writing music. You know, I was listening to, um, what was it? Some documentary on the American band, The Eagles. And the guy was, uh, I think it was, I don't know, Glenn, Fly or Glenn, Glenn Fry or um, Creepy Don Henley. Boy, you should figure out why he really wrote Dirty mm -hmm. Laundry. It was pretty vile. Or a 16 year old dead hooker in his, or sorry, 16 year old uh, OD'd hooker in his uh, hotel room. Uh, nasty stuff. Anyway, um, but yeah, they're talking about that they lived above the um, lawyers in love uh, guy. I can't remember his name. Jackson Brown, the guy who later beat up Daryl Hannah. I'm sorry that I know these things. I just do. And, you know, like, oh, he'd like work up and he'd play the same phrase like 20 times, 30 times. Then he'd write a little bit down and make another pot of tea. And then he'd just keep writing and keep writing. And this is what you do. You know, funny because people use this word like, well, that's, he's just obsessive about X, Y, and Z, right? It's like, I, you know, I don't know what the word obsessive is. But, you know, everything that's really great in this world comes out of because people are obsessed with it. People are obsessed with it. And Bohemian Rhapsody, they only stopped adding tracks because the tape ran completely clear and they couldn't add any more tracks. This is back before you could do this stuff on computers. And the attention to detail that's necessary for that kind of genius to, to flourish is, uh, of course, it's obsessive. You know, that, that boy, that guy who invented the polio vaccine was totally obsessed with beating polio. Yes. And I'm very glad that he was <laughs> because I like swimming in public pools when I'm a kid, even now. So be obsessive, surrender to your obsession and say, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it 150% because that's mostly what's needed to succeed. I mean, yeah, there's talent and, and I get all of that. And I'm not saying that's inconsequential, but talent without work is just self-contempt because you know, you have the ability, but you just won't work at it. And so you end up, your talent becomes an avenue for self-contempt and a real sense of frustration and, and wasted opportunity. 
So there is talent, and, and that's not inconsequential. But the people who succeed in general, the people who succeed in general, it's only one thing you have to do, is you have to do one thing more than everyone else is willing to do. That's all you have to do to succeed. You just have to do one thing more than what everyone else is willing to do. And it's been true of this show from the very beginning, that I do the topics that people are too chicken shit to do. They know they need to talk about these things. They know they need to talk about family voluntarism. They know they need to talk about the non-aggression principle when it comes to parenting. They know they need to talk about parenting. They know they need to talk about racial IQ differences. Everybody knows this. And the number of people I know in the public sphere who I know know this shit and don't fucking talk about it is ridiculous and contemptible. So why has my show succeeded? Because I'm willing to do what other people aren't willing to do. And I'm not willing to do it for shock value, and I'm not willing to do it for success. I mean, it would be a much more comfortable show in many ways if I hadn't done the things that are controversial to do, but it's, I can't look at the camera. I can't look at, at the listenership. I, I can't write and, and go on people's show. I can't do any of that and say, oh, people got to have integrity. They got to be honest. They got to be courageous and they got to tell the truth and then conceal things that I know that are important that need to be talked about. I mean, I just, I can't do it. I mean, I would, I, I, it's not even tempting to do it. So when it comes to music, you just have to be willing to do what other people aren't willing to do. Now, musicians, a lot of them, pretty hedonistic lifestyle, right? It's very easy to slip into that haze of drugs and sex and rock and roll and waste a lot of time. So you just have to be the disciplined musician. That's what you have to be. You have to be the disciplined musician, the guy who gets up and says, I'm going to write. I sit down and write for three hours. And sit down and write for three hours and sit down and write for three hours. I'm going to play my stuff in front of a live audience. I'm going to continually test it and change it and improve it until it's what people love. And then I'm just going to keep doing that. And I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep doing that. And I'm not going to be defeated by setbacks. I'm not going to be defeated by failure. I'm just going to understand that there is no road in this world that is perfectly even. There are bumps and dips and valleys, and there are roads that are washed away, and there are bridges that are cracked and broken, and you just find a way across the river. You're just willing to do what other people aren't willing to do. Most people, when they hit resistance, they get sanded down, right? What is it? resistance? They get sanded down. Because they say, well, oh, I tried to do this, but then this happened, and this didn't work, and then this didn't happen, and this didn't work, and blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And they just stop. Or what happens is their forward momentum gets arrested just slowly over time. Their forward momentum just gets arrested. Slow down a little bit more each time. Slow down a little bit. Oh, there's another resistance. Oh, this guy didn't return my call. Oh, this didn't work. Oh, I lost my work here. The computer crashed. Oh, this. And then they just low, slow down. It's slow motion sickness. And they just grind to a halt. And it's like, okay, then you've just failed. And what's happened is the baton has been passed to someone who says, Okay, so there's things in the way. Good. I like the fact that there are things in the way. Do you think I don't know what's happening to my stuff in social media? I know it's being suppressed. And I'm like, good. That's actually fine with me in many ways because it means that we're having an effect. What we're doing is having an effect. And it also means that other people are going to get slowed and stopped by that. And I'm sorry that this unfortunate and unjust stuff is happening. But that's the, I'm not going to stop. I'm like, okay, good. This was going to happen when we got closer to having an effect, when we got closer to having a real impact. So it's baked into the equation. It's built into the cost of doing business, so to speak. The cost of telling the truth is you're going to get a lot of resistance. And knowing that is a spur. The resistance makes me stronger. The resistance makes me more focused. The resistance makes me go faster and harder forward. And other people will get sanded down by that. And I'm telling you out this, if you're out there, don't get sanded down by it. Some of you will and some of you won't if it's identified. Good. But you need to just do what other people aren't willing to do. That's all that success fundamentally comes down to. Are you willing to stay up later? Are you willing to be vulnerable? Are you willing to pour heart, mind, and soul into what it is that you're doing? Are you willing to be wrong? Are you willing to be scorned at and jeered and attacked? And if you are, you'll succeed. And if you are stopped by those things, you shouldn't even try because then you'll have a big failure that you'll judge yourself by. And if you're not willing to go the distance, it's better not to even start the race because you just wear yourself out for nothing. And I'm saying that to you, Daniel, because if you want to be into music, music is only risky if you're lazy. Because anything you do long enough, you're going to get good at. You're going to get good at. And... 
all you have to do is persist. You know, it's that old saying that success is 99% perspiration and only 1% inspiration. All you have to do is persist. And you will gather the skills that come from not giving up. You will gather the resources and the robustness and the resolution that comes from simply not giving up. And everything that's great in your life, from great technology to great music to great political theories to great philosophical arguments, are all the result of crazy obsessive, I'm not giving up. It took me close to 30 years to come up with a working theory of secular ethics that has now stood the test of time. It took me 30 years of thinking about it. It took me even longer to come up with a functional and valid theory of free will. And I've got all the stuff written down in a book that I'm working on and so on. So you just have to be persistent. Now, why haven't other people come up with secular ethics? Either they don't think it's important, which of course it is, or they just gave up, or they just said, well, this answer is good enough for me, which is what I did with objectivism for quite a while. I remember reading about free will in The Psychology of Self-Esteem. I think it was in Nathaniel Brandon's book and thinking, oh, well, he's written about it. And so here's the answer. And I read it and I was like, no, that's not really, that's not really very satisfying. That's not really a really good answer. I, okay, well, I guess I was hoping to read. And so you just, you just be persistent. And so I, I very clearly remember 2006, 12 years ago, I sat down and I had to pee. It's actually important that I had to pee. I sat down at a table and I was like, man, I got to pee. And I'm like, you know what? No, you don't get to pee until you solve this problem. You don't get to get up from this table until you solve this problem. And uh, that can be quite an incentive. <laughs> <laughs> My eyeballs are turning yellow. I think I solved this problem. And if you just say, well, I'm, I'm not going to give up until I've given it everything I've got. And then if you've given it everything you've got, you know, like when I left theater school, I like, I had a play and I had no money and I, I put ads up and, and I hired actors and I rented a theater and we rehearsed that play and, oh man, it was rough. I had to fire people who got really, I mean, they're actors, they're volatile as hell sometimes, right? I got really got people screaming at me because I fired them because they were pretty bad. And somebody was screaming at me. I fired him because he was just a terrible actor. He was good in the audition, but just and you just was bad and I had to I, I had to fire the guy and he's screaming at me and he was gonna send me a bill for every single goddamn hour he worked on this stinking fucking play and you know he's right in my face red and screaming at me I had to fire another guy who was pretty bad I was actually gonna take the role myself which I didn't really want to do but instead a friend of mine who I actually wrote the part based on agreed to take the role and he was not an actor. He had no experience, but he was natural because I wrote the character based on him. So he was actually able to do a good job. And that play called Seduction was the adaptation of Turgenev's Fathers and Sons. It only ran for like a week because it's all I could do before I was going back to school. And a couple nights, it was just pure magic, pure magic, just the way everything went and the way everything played out. And I mean, it was all just wonderful, wonderful stuff. And I really, really enjoyed it. Didn't make a lot of money out of it. But I gave it everything I had as a producer, as a director. I was satisfied with what happened and I didn't want to do it again because I wanted to do something else. And you give it everything you've got and then you can walk away without regrets. It's the same thing in relationships. You, you communicate until you can't communicate anymore. You either break through, you break out. So I say to people, you've got problems with people in your life, sit down and talk with them. Get the lay of the land. Be honest, be open, be vulnerable, be willing to be rejected, to be cursed. And you will get the true value of the relationship. Because if you're vulnerable with someone in a relationship and they shit on you, that tells you all you need to know. So if you want to go into music, um, my advice is go into music. But don't fucking half go into music. Don't go in it to be a cover band. Don't go in it for the groupies or for the high of just performing and so on. Go into it knowing that it's a job. 
And it's a job with a hell of a lot of competition. And it's a job where the prize is so great that everybody wants it. It's like acting. The prize is so great. You get millions of dollars, you get fans, you get your pick and choice of projects, you get to work with the very best people in the world, which means everybody wants it. How many people would like to do what I do? A lot. So why don't they? Come on. It's the internet. Take me on. Be better than me. That'd be fantastic. I'd love to come work for you. But they don't. Why? Because they don't want to do what I'm willing to do. That's the only barrier. It's nothing magic about it. So, oh, Steph, you're so eloquent and so on. Well, yeah, because I started writing when I was six years old. I started debating when I was eight years old. I was on a debate team. I was uh, in theater school where we did lots of improv and, and role plays. And I wrote and I wrote 35 plays and I've written hundreds of poems and I've written 12 books. And it's like, this doesn't come out of nowhere. Oh, he's got a talent. Yeah. Tell me all about the talent, please. I think I was this good when I started. I was this good when I started in 2006. Well, maybe not this good, but I was pretty good. But that's because I'd already been studying philosophy for 25 years. Doesn't come out of nowhere. So recognize it's going to be a haul. And success is simply a game of last man standing. That's all it is. It's simply a game of last man standing. Be willing to do what other people aren't. If they're willing to write for 10 hours a week, you write for 20 hours a week. Now, I remember there's this sticker or something you put on your fucking journal and it says, so I haven't written a lot lately. So what? Neither has Shakespeare. And it's like, he's got the excuse of being 400 years dead, bro. Just get down, and just write something. Just do it. Like all the people I know who were like, oh, you wrote a book, man. I've always wanted to write a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to write a book. You know, if you have to write a book, maybe you've got a chance emotionally if you feel like you have to. But if you just want to do it or people who are like, oh, you know, I was doing this for a certain amount of time. But now I think I'm just I'm going to I'm just going to write a book. It's like, are you now? Yeah. You know, I've been doing software for quite a while, but I think I'm just going to do tracheotomies and appendix operations now, you know, because I just feel like doing it. It's like, no, it's difficult and complicated stuff. And so go make music, go write music, go test music. And just do more than the band next door. And that's how you get to the stadium. And there's no other way to do it. So, and I, you hear these stories, uh, even like Aerosmith, you know, when, when Steve Tyler came along, yeah, creepy AF. But when Steve Tyler came along, he's like, man, you guys got to tighten it up. You got to get professional. You got to make it happen. You got to make it work. We got to start writing. We got to like, like, this is a job. This is a business. We got to be really good at all of this stuff. And then you get to the top and you get to make some money. If you're, if you're smart, you're willing to work harder than other people are. You're willing to go further than other people are. And you're willing to be smart about what you make then you can make it and it'll be a hell of a lot more satisfying than public relations.